What is up, everyone? Welcome to Plastic Hearts Podcast, a show where we break down the video game news of the week. My name is Fonzie, and I'm joined by my co-host, indie game dev extraordinaire, Gavin Jones. Gavin, how are you doing? Eventually, if I stop coding for long enough, you're going to stop calling me that. <laughs> Never. Right? Your, your, your eulogy, I'm going to be saying that till the wheels fall off, Gavin. Till the wheels fall <laughs> off. That's that's the same phrase my balls have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't quit till the wheels fall off. How you been? I've, I've been good. It's been a good holiday weekend. This yeah. is... Uh, it's still weird getting used to this is i think this is the second uh this is probably the first uh year where uh as of now where i've worked at a place where i do get holiday weekends off and it's still never gonna feel normal to me because i've worked in the industry food industry whatever fucking industry retail for so long it feels so abnormal to uh right right yeah same with me it took a while to get to that point where it's like yeah i don't have to worry about weekends and it's it's fucking awesome yeah that's how everybody should should live but i guess we need stuff on the weekend still so somebody's got to be there you do i'm still going to the bars on the weekends that's <laughs> uh but you tip extra you tip yeah there you go extra well i tip extra you know. <laughs> uh what you been playing fuck did i play anything i played a teeny bit of that game i talked about uh last week uh the whatever thing on the switch um but i can't remember the switch it. um so like your go-to there's one that you always kind of go to on the switch no it was a new one no i mean go to for a while has been paper mario oh right um, you were like uh double ending those two whatever they were paper mario and then another one that's similar to that right yeah yeah uh the uh bug fable um there you but go. i just like lately i've been so busy i haven't had any time for it so i <sighs> I think I probably played a teeny bit of Team Fight Tactics um, mm-hmm. right before bed, but the kind of your wind down thing. No, because it takes forty five minutes to an hour to play. Okay, <laughs> so I know when I go into this, I shouldn't be playing this. I shouldn't be playing this. I shouldn't be playing this. And you know me, I have terrible uh, what's the memory word? for uh, control over yourself. Mm. Uh, whatever that is, uh, I have I have terrible uh, control. So like I'm like ah, I gotta be bed in ten minutes. Oh, what what what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Two games later, it's one a.m. Right. Um. But no, I don't. I don't think I played anything. I played. I watched some movies. Um. Nice. That was about it. I watched uh the, the before uh one of Watiti uh what should I call it? Taika Watiti. Taika Taika Watiti. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, it popped up. I I was looking up the guy uh the main character I guess in uh jurassic park because someone Mm. was telling me about like some movie he was in like advent horizon or something like that and um and then i looked it up and it was like oh the horror space movie yeah yeah yeah. a deep horizon damn it now i'm blanking on it but it's something horizon yes it might be advent horizon i might be right on that well there's advent rising which is that other game right oh you might be merging those fucking sick (laughs) everyone go play it all one of you go play it. <laughs> yeah that needs remade next mm, maybe uh, and it, it needs to play exactly as bad well no it doesn't actually they could totally fix that gameplay that's when they were supposed to like branch off of that and do like a trilogy but i don't think everything uh, yep. people bought it was it, a trilogy. it was it was fully a trilogy that's the thing the developers behind it are so loaded now if they mm. really wanted to they could probably go off uh the mustard brothers could go off and but they're like i mean they're having such a good time at uh Event Horizon. Thank you. Event Horizon. Queen Bundy. Thank you. There we go. Uh, so that was the one, and it got me to... Uh, or do you want to tell her that she's wrong, even though it could, because you feel like it's a different name? That's usually your go-to. It's like, nope, you're not right. I'm right. I'm usually standard. wrong. <laughs> yeah, so, you are. I'm trying to tell you. You're usually wrong. We're going to go I'm with trying that. to help you. Uh, but no, so I played uh, something of the Wilder people. Like uh, You watched it, or you played it? I watched it. It was... Uh, Man, can, can you imagine if Tycho got into games? He fucking dope. wrecked the whole shop. Yeah, he could easily like, write something for sure. Let's get him into the game with George R. R. Martin and From Software, and the whole industry will not be able to recover. <laughs> We're just like, oh, the bar is fucking up here now. Yeah. <laughs> We're just, woof. Uh, but yeah, it was it was something of the wilder people. It's about like this the story of this boy who's just been passed around from foster home to foster home. Uh, and then he uh, gets passed off in his family and mm. he tries to run away and the dad tries to follow him. And it's just really, ca- it's like, it's a really cute story. And I think it falls into the department of like the story itself did not need to be told, but it's told so well. I can give two shits. Nice. I've heard that's a really good one. Yeah. I, yeah. I need to check it out. So 
So, and now I need to do Jojo Rabbit, but that's still twenty dollars to rent. So, that one's really dope, though. I highly recommend that. That's I really love that movie. Yeah, we'll do that. Although I hear Bill and Ted is also twenty. It's been an interesting discussion over these prices. Yeah. Now that you have like Mulan out for thirty, and people are like, I watched it for thirty and regretted it. But Bill and Ted uh, for 20 and I fucking loved it. Yeah. I don't care how bad it was. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like it was more of that same thing. So I think it fit yeah. well in that whole world. But yeah, with Disney, it's like you still have to pay for the subscription Uh-oh. and then you have to do that. Um, yeah, I think our internet is having issues. Yeah, red but, means you're dropping every single frame. Yeah, but we're recording visually anyway. So like I'll just upload it either way. But yeah, I think it's just the internet in general is off. So, so we're broadcasting no one, but we're still recording. So yeah, Gavin. Uh, as far as what, what did uh, what did you play? I played. I've been trying to get better or improve on um, on West of Dead. So I was playing that over the. Oh, that's right. That's we took right. the weekend off and we had a hotel. We're hanging out, and so in the meantime, I was playing that. And man, it's it's at awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like at night, I was just playing that on my Switch. Nope. Um, but it was dope. I, I really like that game. It's just I wish I was better at the actual gameplay, but it's like, I can feel myself getting better and better mm-hmm. and how it really clicked with me. It's like, Oh, you're supposed to die nonstop. And then you sure. slowly get better. You kind of gain all the difference, a little, uh, abilities and, and guns kind of, uh, they spawn uh, more fre- frequent. So you can kind of unlock the ability for them to spawn frequently or in abilities too. Mm-hmm. But, uh, man, I'm really digging it. It's just brutally hard. And then I'm also battling against this, uh, drifting joy con on the left side. So it's like, I'm battling that and I also suck at the <sighs> game. So it's a whole thing. You can't have anything, flawed in your control of no. playing any roguelite ever no but i do and so it's like uh you know i'm missing a tire and i'm still trying to drive down the freeway but <laughs> yeah it's still really fun though still really really fun i i think i i'd be curious now that you have a pc and you're getting a bit into pc gaming i would be curious to have you try so i hated roguelites mm. for the longest time fucking binding of isaac absolute classic for roguelite hated it uh never played it um Spelunky, uh, my favorite of all time, possibly. Uh, hated it. Uh, I don't know about Nuclear Throne. That that's actually probably my favorite of all time. But yeah. all these roguelites that I absolutely adore, hated for the longest time until I played Faster Than Life or Faster, Faster Than, Life. Than Light. Sorry. Um, I would be curious. I would totally pay like it's probably like five bucks. I would pay five bucks to have you try this. I might even have it on Steam or something. Or you or, might. Uh, not eBay. Um, Epic, I think, had it free on at one point. So I feel like I. Oh, have they it. have their new game. Uh, has been out free on Epic twice. It's uh, Into the Breach. Oh, which they, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Even the developers have said Into the Breach. Sure, I had the issue. Um, that, like Faster Than Life was so clear. Like the second you looked at a screenshot of Faster Than Life, you knew exactly what you were doing in this game, and you were on board. Gotcha. Whereas uh, Into the Breach, sort of had a problem. You could watch somebody play and not really know what was going on. Ah. Uh. Um, and, and it, it definitely doesn't have the following, but at least these developers are still being very experimental. They're making the games they want to make. Um, yeah, I'd be curious because this was finally the time where I understood that, oh, dying is part of the fun. Right. I got a little bit further. That little bit further felt so fucking bad. Right. Oh. Well, I guess I'm, I'm familiar with that whole uh, kind of gameplay when it comes to, uh, if you remember... There was that game, damn, it's not Control, it's Celeste. It was that uh, 2D side-scroller kind of like Super Meat Boy-esque game. And that one you die constantly, but it's so fast where you can jump in and and retry something. That's different, though, because that's a super hard. Like, remember when we had our interview with uh, the the fellow that uh, Laser? Right, right. So that's when I kept describing his game as a super hard. That's what I meant. Is like, this is a game where you're just fucking failing constantly back into it yeah learning and trying Keep going yeah but i but guess it's a different kind of get good right right and i guess i get so sort of that vibe where i can i do like that with celeste where you're dying a yeah. bunch but you're learning mm-hmm. and i wish maybe with west of dead i could jump in faster or they had a little taste of that but um so i haven't been like turned off from games that do make you fail over and over again mm-hmm. but um and we're back on but uh, yeah, so I wish uh, I was better at West of Dead, but I'm not. But I still keep playing it and loving it. I do want to try and review it, but it's I've yet to actually beat the first boss, so I feel like I need to oh, actually shit. take more time. But I play for a good, I don't know, maybe eight hours at this point, nine hours. been sinking a lot of time in the first two levels over and over again. Mm. But uh, I'm not going to let that game beat me. That made me uh, re- uh, think of something, too. So that, that one game that I can't remember the name of to save my life, it's like <laughs> Super Fighter, some, some fucking dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a terrible name, uh, but on the Switch. Not only does it have a regular single player, which is a, it's not quite a boss rush, but it's basically a boss rush. It's got a multiplayer, which looks intense as hell. 
Um, but it's also got single player where your friend can play as the bosses. And that sounds so mean to me. Nice. That I would love to play that. I'd never beat a single boss, though. Like, you think about... Well, no, there's a game that's done that successfully. I forget. It, Crawl. Crawl allowed you... It was a dungeon crawler roguelite okay. um, where you played as the enemy. And both the, the, the protagonist and the antagonist character, both their moves were so slow that really hitting each other took a lot of effort on gotcha. on everyone's part and i think it was up to four players where you could you could have all these characters in there and huh. everyone's competing to take over the protagonist and beat the final boss okay um i haven't yeah. seen that what it look like visually like what style you should look it up real quick because mm. i can't describe this it is it is adult swim mixed with dirty dishwater is what <laughs> i would describe this give pixel- me that uh the name of the game again crawl crawl gameplay yes crawl Gameplay. Do you know how long ago it came out? Uh, probably this about four years ago. Yeah. So yeah, this is like Adult Swim mixed with dishwater and uh, <laughs> pixel art. It's uh, could they not zoom in all the way? It looks like garbage when they're zoomed in this far. The animations are fantastic. Mm. Um, zooming in all the way is not helping. I see. I love this art style. Like I'm a huge fan nowadays with uh, 8-bit stuff, 16-bit stuff. So somebody's controlling the spirit? Yeah, so you saw the spirit came over, possessed like one of those pentagram things, uh, became the enemy. So you have to fight all the enemies. Gotcha. Um, but the enemies, are they're very loosey-goosey. They're kind of hard to control. The main character is slightly better. Um, so yeah, it is difficult to play an enemy. When you look at that delay on their attacks. I see. That slug is actually one of the easier ones to play. This looks pretty dope. Right? Now, is it, can you have a party of people or it's just somebody controlling the boss or the... Uh... Uh, I think you can do one player... Uh, yeah, up to four players. I see. It's dope. It's fucking hard, though. Mm. Because you only... Even like after the... Uh, I think the main character only has three lives regardless. Gotcha. Yeah, it's been out for a while. It might be on sale at this point. Yeah. I played it pretty early on. I think it's been patched quite a bit since. Gotcha. Speaking nice. of patching, I was watching uh, some AGDQ videos, and apparently um, Short Hike has added more content to it since launch. That's what I need to play. Yeah, and I've been seeing more stuff online. People digging it and highly, recommended it, uh, highly recommending it as well. I need to... It's, jump in and it's so fucking chill it's just like breath of the wild meets chill meets i don't know animal crossing like mm. it's just so fucking chill <laughs> is it a funny game too i feel like i've hear, heard good stuff about the writing itself or just it's smart how they it's funny enough the, the, the the fun is in the exploration gotcha yeah nice gotta try that but we should probably get into some news at some yeah point. we got some news <laughs> this one just dropped and we're not sure how legit it is but yeah. uh, we're reacting in real time Fresh off the turntables, we've got uh, the Xbox Series. What kind of speaker would you call that? <laughs> a Bose speaker? Maybe it's like in a crappy Honda in the back or something. I mean, this can't be real. It's. That's... I think it's possible. I mean, the, the design itself is kind of out of left field, but I feel like they've had this. <laughs> yeah, of course. I feel like they've had this grid kind of pattern on other yeah. stuff. Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. I want to say the... The One S has something like that, but like a re a re edition of it. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that does. If that's for cooling, who knows? Because the uh, the Series X has that tower design, and this one doesn't. It's more like a standard kind of uh, rectangle. But maybe that's for for cooling purposes. Although, don't put anything next to that, or can you like cook tort- tortillas on it or something, or a grilled cheese sandwich? I mean, you, you, do you remember seeing back in the day when people like? Uh, put eggs into a heat sink of an Xbox that had red rings to see how no. quickly it'd cook. How'd it work? Uh, instant. <laughs> damn. I didn't realize ki- eggs could transform that quickly, but I uh, uh, got damn. <laughs> so also, the, if this is uh, correct, it's two ninety nine, which is pretty nuts because this is kind of going to undercut, and it's not going to be, I imagine, as powerful as like say PS5, but it's something in between where the Xbox Series X is going to be this crazy... Uh, beefy powerful f- powerful machine and this can be something that is somewhere around lower than the ps5 more advanced than the xbox one x i imagine wait hold on does that say estimated retail price 
Estimated retail price. Yeah, yeah. So it could be something else. Two ninety nine does seem very low. Yeah, that's very low. Well, how much? Right. If I were to go out and buy an Xbox, uh, whatever we're on Pro right now, the like, One X. Yeah, it was yeah, like the One thing. X, the the HD or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. how much is that? I'm sure it's more than three hundred. That one used to be five hundred when it came out. I want to say it's at least four hundred dollars. So this is cheaper than that. Uh, maybe this is like really bare bones as far as like what's inside, and it's made for game pass or something yeah i mean that's the thing though like can you have this thing coming out at less than you know your current high def console i don't know enough about hardware to know that that's possible i know if you look at that newest card that we've been talking about from nvidia yeah the 30 where yeah it's 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 half the price for the same amount of power if not more right um so did nvidia make some sort of jump that way with this as well uh, I wonder. I mean, they could really just give you the same hardware that's in- inside the One X, and maybe improve like RAM or something, no. and just charge two ninety nine. You don't think so? No, like the same hardware. That's not next gen console at that point. You're right, and I wonder if this isn't necessarily what they're promoting as next gen. If this is like a cheaper version, a way to get next gen people in there, and it just streams games, or it's Game Pass focus, or it's some kind of like middleman. So the people that don't want to spend the five hundred, six hundred bucks on like a One X or a Series X would be. But uh, uh, it's interesting because it adds more, just more, you know, questions into going into next gen. What they're going to rely on this for? What reason is it going to? What where is it going to fill the gap as far as like in the line of all the different Xboxes? There's the One S, there's the One X, now the Series X and Series S. But it has a series name, so it's got to be more powerful than the current stuff, right? Right. So, but for two ninety nine, seems nuts to offer that. So, but this is still rumored, so who knows? Right. Yeah. And the pricing is estimated. Uh, I mean, they put it right there. It's... Right. I mean, uh, all the big outlets, like Wild 64 is a huge outlet. They're reporting it. So, I mean, uh, I'm just not sure, like, the validity of it. We're actually showing this video. And it looks like it's just the image. So this person has got a hold of the actual image itself, the promo. I mean, the only thing that makes me think this is real is that picture is so fucking wild. Mm-hmm. Like, if you were going to try and make a realistic-looking prototype, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah, this seems different enough where it's like, this is them behind the wheel. Uh, but at the same time, why wouldn't the grading be white? That makes no sense. That's very weird. Yeah, I want to look up the one S cause, or the... Um, God, there's so many of them. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the one... The Xbox One S, I feel like they added some kind of weird color scheme like that to the, like the more recent ones. <sighs> I guess it's just, yeah, Xbox One S, maybe white. Put that wrong. White! <laughs> yeah, it's, no, I mean, they have the, the weird yeah, uh, grid the white, pattern. Yeah, it's a white grid. But it's still white. So what is that? That must do something. So maybe it's them downscaling this whole, like, grid pattern into more of a circle kind of design. For what reason? I don't know. I'm calling it. It's fake. Gotcha. Well, you always kind of lean on the hater side, so we'll see. Why would it be black? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's different. Um, you know what? Maybe they're trying to mimic the top grid of the One X, but it's not quite the same. So I'm just trying to like figure out like what would they be trying to like visualize by having that weird grid pattern, because it kind of stands out in a negative way. But I don't unless know. it's a speaker. I mean, at the same time, like this is how leaks happen. They're saying Brad Sands. I assume that's a retail outlet. Retail outlets are how this shit leaks. Yeah, that's usually where it leaks first. Yeah, this seems like a YouTuber though, but because it goes straight to this YouTube page, which is guys actually breaking it down and talking about it. And yeah, Brad Sam's. my neck is the same width as my <laughs> head, and I look like Earthworm Jim. I'm sorry, that's mean. <laughs> we call I mean, you it, already I know, but <laughs> please don't murder me. <laughs> He's breaking on the door as we speak, oh. but um, with his neck. Um, <laughs> Twenty <laughs> several thousand times the fan base is us is like no. Oh. Right? Yeah, I don't think he gives a shit. No, he absolutely does not. <laughs> But yeah, that's this in the YouTube channel. Oh, uh, yeah. Comment section all day. Every day. Oh, yeah. He's born in the shit talking. But yeah, well, we will see if that's real. Who knows? This kind of thing has to be announced very soon if they are because there's been a rumored Xbox Lockhart for a while. You know, we don't it know the price. Though. I don't know about confirmed. I mean, there was those controllers that put out that had the one S terminology on it, but they haven't yeah. said, hey, we're Xbox. Here's the we're making a one S they have or a series S. They haven't said it from them yet. It's just been leaked all these different I could places. I swear they confirmed it. 
I'm like, Not yet. I'm almost positive they said that there was Scorpio or whatever it was, which is the the one we all want. Yeah. And then there was the Lockhart. I thought that was in a press conference. Ooh, I haven't seen that yet. Scorpio was that one X um, code name. Yeah. But um, and Lockhart is potentially this one. But if they're going to announce it, it's got to be soon because we're getting into holiday season, which is what we'll get into some PlayStation news. The fact that they're not also talking about PS5 yet yeah. is very uh, frustrating. But yeah, we'll see what they announce. It's got to be soon, especially if this thing is full blown leaked. We'll we'll see. Or they actually say, hey, it's not legit at all, and that we're making something else behind the scenes. Who knows, Gavin? But that happened just recently while we we're getting ready, so kind of wanted to dissect it. So we have this uh, cool video. I just wanted you to see this programmer has made 1993's Doom playable on a pregnancy test. So the original article is from IGN Anna Bankers. Boone Turing, a California-based programmer, has made 93's Doom playable on a pregnancy test, truly taking the Will It Run Doom challenge to another level entirely. Uh, <laughs> Foon took to Twitter to share their progress in making videos playable on a pregnancy test, including Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up and the Dancing Stick Bug, but the clips of it running videos of Doom in the Elder Scrolls Skyrim are what I saw my... that one. Ah. <laughs> that one got me. I was watching that on Imgur, and it was just like processing, processing, and then it did the opening to Skyrim, which was hilarious. <laughs> I, I I think. So Jesus what do you think Christ. of this uh, running? Why, I mean, it's pretty rough. Why are we making pregnancy tests this complicated? Is it reusable? Like, what is the deal with this pregnancy test right here? I wonder if it's just the electronics involved are so cheap now that it's just they can do it. So they do it. And it has like a, because the bare bones, like it needs a display and needs a basic chip to do it. And right. Doom can be so small, they can throw it in there. But uh, it looks pretty bad, but it's actually, you know, runnable, playable on this thing, apparently. I mean, I bet that's Doom. Right. I can barely see what I'm looking at, <laughs> yeah. but I bet that's Doom. Right. It's pretty nuts. And it's... that's the other thing, too. On top of running Doom, they also have to run some sort of filter on it to make it work with this display. So that's mm. that's extra processing um, when you consider that, you know... Doom is so, you know, easy to run that they could make it work on a Super Nintendo. Yeah. Um, it's a testament to the the code or whatever the actual structure of Doom itself. But And I think there's also this this challenge with these Uber nerds to try and get it to run on anything. And so that's a, I imagine when someone drunkenly said, hey, could you get it to work on this? It's like, yeah, I bet. Let's try it. I mean, it's been the joke forever. I think ever since it was... <sighs> I'd like to know what the first uh, iteration of Doom on something was. Probably on a TI-89. Interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's done, too. Yeah, I would Oh, it. it's done. <laughs> I mean, it's it's playable, too. That's the other thing. Like, yeah, it's nuts. But uh, it's just that's where we are in 2020. At least that's possible. Maybe not Doom Eternal, but it can run the 93 original Doom. But yeah, we got that going. Uh, let's see. So that was just a fun one I wanted to show you. Blow your right. pants off. Uh, so we got uh, this just kind of confirms for me and it's good to hear, but no more delays. Cyberpunk 2077 expected hit its release date. This is uh, Dave Thier of Forbes.com. Cyberpunk 2077 is nearly here and developer CD Projekt Red has a pretty simple message about that. It, it is actually nearly here. The ambitious open world RPG has already been delayed twice back to its current release date of November 19th. But here in the era of COVID-19 for the delays wouldn't necessarily be out of the question. It's hard out there for, well, almost everyone. In a recent video for the company's financial results, I'm going to butcher this name, CFO Pyotr Nilebowitz assures viewers that by the time the company releases its next quarterly video in December, Cyberpunk 2077 will already be out. In other Cyberpunk news, CD Projekt Red says to expect more DLC than we saw with The Witcher 3. Speaking of Witcher 3, the Polish dev just announced a free next-gen upgrade for The Witcher 3, complete with ray tracing support amongst other visual next-gen upgrades. That game already looks super good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it still looks great. Uh, I was just watching a video of someone playing like the max settings on it. It looks dope. But for because it's what, five, six years now for them to add like the ray tracing stuff, which I think is it kind of predated that and whatever bells and whistles. That's awesome. I think the ray tracing thing is going to look especially good with that one, though, because to my understanding, again, with ray tracing is the limit. The, the major limit is that you can really only ray trace one source. Mm, gotcha. So this being a old fashioned game without a bajillion light sources just do the fucking sun and you're golden. Mm -hmm. So I imagine it'll look fantastic. Um, I wonder when you're inside though, when they do like candlelit um, environments, just old they just... school lighting. Gotcha. Regular old school lighting. You can do both at the same time. Can you do various tricks to make it seem like it's multiple light sources that are reflecting or whatnot? Because if yes. you have a bunch of different, gotcha. Mm -hmm. 
I was going to email them and say, hey, have you tried this? And I guess apparently that is possible. <laughs> yeah, go go look at uh, Metro Exodus. Like Metro uh, Exodus is pulling. That's always uh, a benchmark for your RTX stuff. Yeah, and that's where a lot of people were looking at. That's where people kind of realized, oh, you can really only RTX one surface at a time or one light source at a time. Mm-hmm. But they still do a really good job of fusing old school lighting with RTX lighting. And that's so good that you can do both because modern lighting already is ridiculous. Sure. So... Yeah, like I was playing the Tony Hawk uh, remaster, and there's mm-hmm. every puddle basically has a reflection, and it's nuts. But they're not; they haven't said anything about ray tracing. They're it's just using not. the lighting yeah. to like create that effect. And even Last of Us Two had that as well. And there's no ray tracing. Screen space for reflection. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so I mean, it's already nuts. So the fact that maybe it's easier now they can actually have the computer, the the engine do it. But I mean, I mean, you're still out of the weeds. It's another whole like branch of issues you got to deal with. But yeah, it's interesting. I'd be curious to see at what point. So I don't really know how screen space reflections work. I know they look really good, um, but you can only do them within a certain distance of the camera. And I still don't know how that works. So I'd be very Mm. curious to see. Would it be easier to expand with ray tracing or would it be easier to expand with screen space reflections? Gotcha. Yeah. And ray tracing is a new hotness. So I think people also want to be able to say, hey, it's got this. It's got the support to that and uh, current PCs and next gen stuff going forward but um yeah i mean it's good for going back to cyberpunk uh that's one of my fears as as when we saw halo get delayed and that's such a huge game this one is like times 10 as far as the scope of it so i'm like i'm thinking okay yeah that get ready to expect that kind of delay but the fact that at least to them they're saying it's still on track uh i can't wait and we talk about like building a pc for this i can't wait to get this on my pc that's why i've been just constantly tinkering with it and upgrading stuff because i wanted to just run the best that it can then run but I, cannot I, think, wait. I think the big difference, though, is you look at like Cyberpunk with CD Projekt Red. They didn't show this game. They didn't start showing this game until they knew it was ready to start being shown. Yeah. Whereas Halo didn't start showing this game until it was way too soon to be shown. Yeah. They needed at least another year. And I think they were just uh, forced. Their hand was forced because they're trying to coincide with the uh, 1X and a whole, yeah. I imagine, behind the scenes laundry list of issues. That's interesting. There's a flammable sign on the uh, bar right there. Uh, maybe to like get out of a situation, you light your drink on fire or something. <laughs> Shoot the bar and it. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. That's the thing. Like the the whole all the mechanics and systems in this game are going to be nuts, and I can't wait to just jump in and try all these different things. But yeah, the way just the characters alone, everything ha- everyone has like a purpose. They're doing something. They're fully animated. It's just so much going on, and yeah. See, that makes me nervous. Is that was a thing with The Witcher that gave me anxiety is when you enter that first bar and literally you can talk to every single person in that bar and they'll have a dialogue jam like all right i'm fucking out <laughs> just too much or too daunting or... that was too much that was way too many choices like what if i miss somebody yeah like, i, I don't want sense... to talk to every single one of you people i'm an introvert let me <laughs> right i don't need this uh realistically you know portrayed no I, I feel you with the sense of i don't want to miss something so it, now now it means like in my head okay i have to talk to everyone so i don't miss this opportunity to take this mission but i don't want to have to now stress out about making sure i'm talking to everyone i want to be organic and i feel like i'm not going to miss out on a conversation that matters or like a mission that matters but yeah it's like you can throw and that's really the problem i had with witcher in general all the different things on screen the places you can go it was just too much like there's a art to like kind of the breadcrumbs you leave for the characters right yeah or for the players yeah absolutely nice but so we're getting cyberpunk okay. can't wait i really want to see this playing I just want another uh, Night City Wire event mm-hmm. for them to show more of this game off because I just you can watch this and it doesn't I feel I don't feel like it spoils your experience at all because mm-hmm. they're just showing you random parts and then this thing is so customizable where you can play your own playthrough as as much you know to whatever detail you want so this is not going to be the same way that you play the game. I think the thing that's got me interested too. I recently watched I think it was IGN maybe it wasn't somebody was covering kind of talking about the history of the company that if you if you work as like. Uh, under the tech company as your starting character they're like this company is basically a bad guy Mm. but they've got this really cool complex backstory that's kind of realistic okay like it's sort of this like nationalist japanese company and then they have to flee due to world war ii um and then they come to america and they kind of deal with that aspect like it was it was super fascinating so I'm curious to kind of see how they take that uh, route with all this. That's really cool. And I want them to lean into more realistic, like adult Mm -hmm. uh, content and actually uh, referencing the real world and kind of dealing with issues that we deal with already with 
just cybernetics or the uh, the internet and the whole tech stuff and because we're dealing with that say with china and how they deal with you know just dealing with american corporations it'd be cool to just like really comment on that the way yeah. that rockstar does with stuff but they always take like the comedic route but i feel like they could do something that's more realistic right this isn't what what's that word uh it's a parody not parody um criticism kind of between like right in between those two uh where you're like parodying it as a crit ah shit fuck it <laughs> uh anyway i think we can trust cd project red to kind of do that in the way that a lot of companies have kind of failed to do in the past oh yeah uh, for sure. but that being said this is a fully fictitious world any commentary on modern day society is legitimately coincidence mm. like cyberpunk as a thing is supposed to be this dystopian society it's in this world that's like held up by you know strings and gum at sure. this point so like the fact I that i think that's we, us right now <laughs> that we as america are reflecting it like this was made up when that wasn't the time yeah very true. that wasn't a thing <laughs> so yeah it was legitimately sad it's like 1942 or 82 or whatever 84? like yeah it's coincidences are right. It's art. They weren't predictions. Life. This was this was worst case scenario. Right. So. All right. So yeah, I'm excited. We'll see what uh what they reveal in the current, you know, or upcoming in Night City Wires, but yeah. cannot wait for that freaking game. Oof. But it's coming down the line. Gavin, this was announced last week. Some uh it was teased or you know, rumored for a while. We finally got confirmation from from Nintendo. I, I, I didn't I say I was gonna eat my hat or something? <laughs> you always this... say that, so you got a you know a closet full of hats you gotta get at this point. Uh, Nintendo announces Super Mario 3D All Stars, an enhanced Super Mario 3D World, and a Mario Bros. Battle Royale. This card of Destructoid has the oh, article. That's right. Yeah. So it's not quite battle royale. It's a bit different. It's it more like, like Tetris, Tetris versus. Yep, yep, yeah. exactly. I finally looked at footage, it's like, okay, it's more like that. Yeah. Uh, well, we all knew this day was coming, but Nintendo blew us out of the water this morning. This was last Wednesday. On the 35th anniversary of Mario, Nintendo just announced three new big titles, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which includes Mario 64, Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Bros. 35, a 35-person Battle Royale game, and Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. So Super Mario 3D All-Stars comes out September 18th, which is very soon. Uh, Super Mario 3D World with Bowser's Fury comes out February 12th, 2021. And then the Super Mario Bros. 35, 35-person Battle Royale October 1st. Weirdly, Super Mario 3D All-Stars will only be available be available to purchase both physically and digitally from september 18th to march 31st 2021 after that will be removed from nintendo marketplace for the foreseeable future so this is great news to see this game finally this compilation but it's it's immediately soured by the fact that there's this weird window of time to buy it even digitally yeah it's strange but i mean it's a it's the disney vault theory at this point like we're gonna bring it out you can buy it in this limited quantity and we take it away that being said they have plenty of stuff that they brought out and they're not bringing back like the the mini snap or the mini uh the nes classic right that's true super nintendo uh those aren't coming back um Although I understand, oh, or I feel like with hardware, it makes sense. It's like, hey, we have to physically produce sure. this. There's plastic. There's it electronics. Does. Yeah, prints. But yeah. when it's digital, you just copy and paste the motherfucker. Like, what do you actually have to do? It's even simpler than that. Right? Dude. It's, it's, it's gotta even be. simpler than that. So then it's a uh, conscious decision on their end to get to, to say, hey, we want I don't know the sales now, or if we have quarterly stuff we have to answer to. So it's only you know buyable between this time. Yeah. It's strange. That being said, should they get a pass just as Nintendo being Nintendo? No, ever. None of these people ever should get a pass. Because mm. um, we're all going to buy it. Like, I'm going to buy this, but it sucks that they're doing that because there's no reason why. They there's no that. reason, especially with digital printing. I get it. Um, Even then, just make more. It's Mario. No, I mean, printing, like, you have to do, when you print a disc, you have to do it in runs. So True. when you, like, let's say you run out of your current thing, you have to print so many more discs. So you have to expect to be able to, pr you know, go through all of them. It still really surprises me that there's no Galaxy 2, which is weird because Galaxy 2 is the better of the galaxies, mm. in my personal opinion. Um, that being said, these three games alone are fucking fantastic. Uh, I, I think the one thing it will remind people of is that Super Mario 64's controls weren't as tight as you thought they were. Mm. Uh, going back and playing that game is just like a, holy shit, why did we put up with this? <laughs> um, it was the first time for Mario in 3D and a lot of games at that time. But it yeah. was the first of so many games yeah. in 3D. That was that was one of the biggest steps. So I, I really don't fault them for it. Right. But we've evolved so much since then. Um, 
I'm excited because we've uh, I've wanted a reason to or an easier way to jump back into Sunshine because I don't yeah. have a GameCube anymore. It's so good. And the same with the Mario Galaxy, it's locked into the Wii. So yeah, I mean, this is they kind of made a turn after the Wii where they had this marketplace on online where you could just download all these old games and you just had them. It was like your 30th time buying these games. But now with Switch, it seems like they're focusing on the remasters, which is still cool, especially since they bundle them all three together like this. It's the whole uh, timed window is very dumb. And I think people are going to hopefully give more shit online for that. But uh, I haven't have seen they, them. Have they ever learned based on people giving them shit? No, I don't think they have the internet or like a phone. Like, I don't know what Nintendo does. They don't they read the paper. They don't give a shit. They just kind of do what they do, which I like and also hate at the same time. Right. But um, because they are so secluded and behind on, you know, like you know, internet infrastructure stuff and quality of life stuff. But they get the pass being Nintendo and they just kind of do what they do. Yeah. And we're going to buy what they make regardless. It is, it is really too bad that you can't get the... Uh, 2d collection with the 3d collection and maybe throw in like uh, whatever uh the ds game was and then they the 64 did one? uh yeah so or no no uh um oh those like side scrolling 2ds ones yeah gotcha yeah. and then pair that with like the one that came out on switch that would be a perfect like let's get that full 2d platformer compilation plus this like yep I'd buy it thrice. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like, that's fantastic. Value. It's frustrating because they could do all these things to just print money, but they decide not to for whatever reason. Yeah. And I just wish I could get a hold of them and, and strangle them and, and tell them, hey, like, do you want money? Okay. But these bundles are what they've done. These are so much better than what they've done in the past, right? So this is, I mean, it's they're under new leadership. They've been under for, for a while. We still mm. have Iwata in there or not iwata uh shigeru miyamoto in there true but i don't know how much pull he has anymore so we've got yeah it might be more software stuff but uh as far as like when they decide to like do this compilation i don't know if he has what yeah. kind of sway he has i mean mario's his baby so i imagine i hope he has some sway but at the end of the day like yeah they're still gonna run their company how they see fit management. peggy seven yeah that's the what international uh, ratings board i want to say if there's a seven-year-old that can beat either Super Mario Sunshine <laughs> or Super Mario Galaxy, I'll be fucking impressed. <laughs> they might be beating them, but they can play them and oh, at least shit. mess how, around. How but old was I when I was beating Super Mario 64? See, that was, what, 2099, somewhere around there, right? And I feel like I was in fifth grade. No, that was way before 99. Gotcha. Let's Google this, because you're always right, Kevin. Well, I didn't move here until 2000. Yeah, but you're still alive in that time, right? Yeah, but so ninety six. Yeah. Okay. So you were born what eighty nine, eighty eight, eighty seven? Uh, you don't reveal that shit on the internet. <laughs> How are they gonna find your address? Why based don't, on why your don't age? I give out my uh, social security number while I'm at it? <laughs> it's not the same at all. The street that I grew up on, my uh, <laughs> the name of my first pet. No, I'm not saying that. Okay, so at ninety six, if I was born in eighty eight, mm -hmm. that is math. That is what I'm. I'm eight, I'm seven, I'm somewhere around there, right? Am I okay. correct? Um, yeah, I'm eight. Cause I, yep, yep. Okay, so I feel like I I was able to at least understand that this game was dope as a kid, and I did play it eventually, yeah. and I might not have been the best at it, but I could at least handle it. Although, like, we say that, but I've seen my nieces and nephews play uh, Fortnite, and they're what? They're younger than that, and they fully understand that, or give them an iPad, and they fully understand that. So it's like the benchmark keeps getting pushed. I mean, it's definitely what you're raised with. You get that muscle memory earlier. Are yep. they younger than? Now seven? they're not. They're about like ten ish age. But, yeah. Um, don't reveal that guy. They probably find their address somehow. They probably online. weren't cranking nineties before <laughs> they were. That's true. Yeah. Double digits. <laughs> I remember the days where they're cranking forties, but cranking in the, in the alleyway. <laughs> I don't know what the kids do these days. But Gavin, that's it's happening September eighteenth. I'm still gonna buy it, but um, yeah. yeah, hopefully they somewhat understand that it's not cool but this means we get if we buy it we get the metroid prime trilogy again right <laughs> i mean i won't buy that but i'm there's a lot of people that will so <laughs> that's our next one because that's another uh, gold mine they're sitting on yeah for sure right so, i could give a shit about that <laughs> yeah let's move to another company that's also uh, frustrating me lately this is uh sony it's uh, no ps5 news or announcements this week sony to focus on psvr so this is chandler wood of playstationlifestyle.net the PlayStation blog detailed a week filled with upcoming PSVR news and reveals managing expectations by saying there'll be no PS5 related news. Every day through Friday, but Sony plans manage on... Manage those expectations. That is fair. At least they say, hey, dummies, we're not going to talk. But it's like, hey, that's what we're waiting for. Let's talk about that. But it is what it is. So it's uh, every day through Friday, Sony plans on putting a spotlight on upcoming PSVR titles, both with brand new announcements and updates to games we know about. These announcements will hit, a, will hit at 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time each day. 
but Sony knowing the hunger fans have for PS5 news was clear to spell out that it would not include any kind of PS5 news or announcements. Quote, and as mentioned, this is all about the game, so to manage expectations, there'll be no PS5 related news. Uh, the first announcement today was uh, Minecraft on uh, PSVR, a PSVR update for free for Minecraft. So. Man, that's got to be a weird game to play in VR. Yeah, I tried looking up. I think people have kind of modded it or done their own way of. Uh, have, you, have you tried it on your VR unit yet? I have not. I think you have to go. You have to. You have to do other means to like get it. It's not like native. There's no Minecraft VR version that I that I know of. But oh, uh, sh- soon shall be. <laughs> but I did find like there's someone who would kind of stretch the screen to create the VR effect. I think it's just like superimposed or like stretched around right. you. But and you um, put that in with the VR goggles. And- right. I mean, PSVR with the Minecraft, like that seems like a great decision. I would definitely play v- uh, Minecraft and VR. Um, it sounds awesome. I'm, I'm surprised there's not like a, a Quest version or or what have you. Like there's a simple uh, VR unit so you can have at home. But yeah, I always get sucked in every couple of months, I would say, into Minecraft where that's my kind of, it's good to wind down and just lo- lose yourself in that game. Sure. Always need a lose yourself kind of game. All right. Yeah, and it's uh, very creepy, though, when you're in the caves and stuff and you only got one life, but yeah. But yeah, so they got they announced so that. Weird. It is frustrating that it's no PS5 because that was the whole thing. It's when we hear from Sony, I want them to finally be ready to talk about PS5. We talked about that leak of Xbox Series S, whether that's real or not. That's not Xbox saying it. It's just something that has been revealed. These companies are still in their weird game of chicken where they're not ready to talk yet until the other one or they're waiting until... November still. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but it's what are we doing? Release it at that price point. Yeah, or it's like, and it's ready today or something like that, which would blow up the fucking internet if they did something like that. I don't think it would. I think the internet would be very frustrated. Yes, they would. <laughs> they would, but just I like would Nintendo, we buy it. Oh, yeah. I'm not even buying the damn thing. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I will. That's the debate is do you go console or do you go PC in this next, you know, transition into next gen? Uh, We will see. So this is positive news, Gavin. A Rocket League won't require PS Plus or Nintendo Switch online when it's free to play. So this is uh, Matt Kim of IGN. Rocket League. Interesting. Right? Rocket League is going free to play soon. And as part of its new initiative, Psyonix is no longer making PlayStation Plus or Nintendo Switch online subscription mandatory for online play. In a new community update detailing the upcoming changes coming to Rocket League when it goes free to play, Psyonix confirmed that the PS4 and Nintendo Switch owners will not need a monthly or yearly subscription to play online. This exemption does not appear to extend to Xbox Live Gold meaning Xbox One players will still need a subscription to the console's digital services to play Rocket League online. No word yet on when Rocket League will officially go free-to-play other than it's happening soon. I thought Xbox announced very early on in their life cycle that if there's a game that's like this, that you could play it for free. Mm, I think Fortnite is still, you need their subscription. Uh, on, on Nintendo, it's free for whatever reason. But um, on, on PlayStation and Xbox, it's still, you need need the actual service. But... Um, I wonder what deal they made behind the scenes. I know it was uh, Rocket League uh, was first on. It wasn't first, but it was on PSN for free when it first launched. So they had that relationship with Sony. But um, yeah, going free to play, I think, is a big deal because this is going to get into more hands. It's a dope game for everybody. So is Rocket League free on PC? It's possible. Let's check it out. I don't know if it is. I feel I like mean, I've, I've seen it on I, Steam. I, I happily paid the money for it. I think for as little, I played way less of this game than a lot of people did. I thought it was totally worth whatever. I didn't pay that much. I thought it was worth whatever it was. Yeah. It's a fun enough game. 20 bucks on Steam right now. It's definitely worth that. Yeah. I could give a shit about soccer. It was worth the 20 bucks. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, now they have all the different DLC packs and stuff you can customize. And I think, yeah, once they fully unlock that free-to-play thing, then it's off to the races. Then it's just as as high as Fortnite as far as popularity. Does Psyonix ever make a new game? This is the last one. This is, what, five, six years now? And that they've been just... They've been crunking away or crunching away at content. So it's like they've just been right. putting that out. But I don't but think their there's... previous game was basically Rocket League. Yeah, it's like super cadifragilistic rocket cars or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So I don't... But when you have a hit like that, I mean, it's making so much money, you just keep um, crunking away. As I said before, you split your teams off, but... I, th- I think you split your teams off. That's mm. the thing. And it doesn't feel like they've split their teams off. So... Yeah, it's tough. I mean, when you are so successful, maybe you just kind of try to innovate and make sure that you keep that whole that that right. market or that uh, environment there those people there but it's tough yeah, yeah i'm not sure what decision they should make but i like the fact it's going free to play i think my my nephews are totally going to jump into this because their whole thing is hurdles it's like are their parents going to buy this thing for them no even the, the whole like um season passes are hard for them to overcome so if it's free to play 
Everybody jumping in. Yet to buy a fucking season pass, and I'm gonna keep it that way for <laughs> as long as keep I the can. kids out. Uh, Gavin, I was just playing this today, so I was going over some of the reviews yeah, for Tony Hawk One so and Two walk remake. In the door. Yeah, so you mentioned as you walked in too, it's gotten actually pretty uh, pretty solid review. So it's the first time in a while for a Tony Hawk game. But uh, it's a Metacritic 88. BG247 gave it 100. Vicarious Visions. Whoa, yeah, they're, they're, they're damn. Right? They're the top of the list here. So Vicarious Visions has proved that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was more than just a product of its time and that like skating itself, it has every chance of penetrating the mainstream once again. Uh, IGN gives it a 90. Turns out going backwards has been the best step forward Activision has taken with Tony Hawk series in nearly 15 years. Destructoid was like the lowest one I could find, 80. Uh, blemishes aside, and Acti- that's good for Destructoid too. Yeah, because I think they kind of are more critical, I, I, which I, I did. I would dig. say 70 on Destructoid is still good. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think 70 is fine for a game too. It's like yeah. when you dip below that. Um, blemishes aside, Activision is doing so much right this time beyond just putting Vicarious Visions in charge. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been playing it and digging it uh, a lot, and it takes me back. Of course, it's like heavy on the nostalgia, but mm-hmm. it's for good reason because those games, original games, were so, so solid. And this one is just crazy beautiful. I think they're using Unreal Engine 4. And it's just so. it's just nuts how beautiful, how it feels the same way as those other games. Like uh, you, the way you lock in and grinding, if you are an inch off, you feel it. But this feels like you're right in there. And also when you bail, stuff like that, how you just go static and then you're back into the action. They've done a little, a lot of little improvements that just help the flow of the game itself. I, I mean, I think that's one of the things they do say over nostalgia. I'd be curious to see how younger people play this game because I think we're willing to, because of all the things you can do due to the forgiveness of this game, there is a lot of jank, but if you can learn to control the jank, mm-hmm. you can do crazy shit. Yeah. So I, I would be curious to see younger people try this game out and see how they feel about it. That's very true because they're not, um, they don't have that, you know, nostalgia. So they're going to be more critical of it and kind of pick it apart, yeah. uh, which is fair because that's kind of how the whole series needs to innovate or change is based on like this newer mm-hmm. group of people, a group of kids. Like, what do they want? What do they want uh, the innovation to happen? Right. But I feel like for me, as an old, uh, fumbly guy, I love it. They're doing everything that I want. The soundtrack, too, I, I was telling you, is on point. They have some of the original songs and the ones that they have picked are dope. And the only time that I allow Ska in my life is when I'm playing this game. And of course, it's on full force there, and I love it. <laughs> Fucking hate Ska, but yeah. this is the one time. It I only serves it, yeah. this purpose. Otherwise, put those guys back in the corner. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. But yeah. Fucking sock down that trumpet and just shut <laughs> yeah. it the fuck down. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely interesting. And that was the thing, too. When I played Skatebird... Mm, yeah i haven't tried it yet but i know you mentioned it wasn't uh quite what you wanted and i thought about this game i'm like all i can think is like this game these games are way more forgiving than anyone gives them credit for yeah and, there's an argument for that yeah and skatebird wasn't and i hated it for that. that must be the key or one aspect of the fun then because you do need the sense of like yeah that i am nailing what i want to nail and i'm not just bailing all the time that was one of my issues with a uh, wave break we interviewed those devs. I forget the yeah. name of uh, them. They're really cool over there. But uh, And I overall liked Wave Break, but it, it was so technical where I was just like failing all the time and there wasn't that little bit of forgiveness to kind of like the game knowing what I want to do and just kind of letting me grind a little bit sooner as I wanted to or something some like that. Some input buffering, some, some kind of forgiveness on Right, that, yeah. right. Which uh, eventually kind of turned me off from keeping uh, it on my on my system. But uh, yeah, this is Didn't exactly what I wanted. Didn't you not even have to download it? I play it on Stadia. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. still on there. But anyway, and it it streamed, it actually worked pretty well for, for the first game that I actually played all the way through streaming it. I love that grind just there where he's like grinding on the wrong side of that and his wheels uh, are just in the dirt. But this is Tony Hawk, motherfucker. <laughs> this is this is this game. Yeah, if you want so real. If you're not down for something that makes no fucking sense, get the fuck out. <laughs> God, that reminds me at the hotel we also watched a marathon of uh, Fast and the Furious. It's the first time I actually sat down and watched those movies. Have and you never? No. Neither I, have I. Not since like the first one that came out, maybe the second. I've never seen first or second either. Really? Yeah. Uh, there. At what point do you quit though? Because I know there's a lot of like, this is the thing with those movies. Is I know like a lot of like movie snobs that are still just like, just fucking watch them. They're <laughs> just fun. Turn off your brain and watch them. I think I get what they're laying down because uh, the marathon was having, it played all of them and we caught bits of, of most of them, but they mm-hmm. stopped at the... The second to last that came out, there's a new one that just came out a couple, what, a year ago or something. 
They didn't have that one. So when I was driving home, I was like, I want to watch that newer one that came out because I had missed all this time in this in this series. And yeah, it's nuts and it doesn't make any sense, but it's silly and fun in a weird way where I just love being able to talk shit out loud at the movie for doing what they do. But I I want to see more of that. So I'm kind of getting why people love those movies so much. But I feel like I need to marathon those and uh Mission Impossible back to back. Sure, same thing. They also play, they're playing the second Mission Impossible at that hotel as well. I don't know what it was about this hotel. It's just like the Twilight Zone, but yeah, they're playing some interesting stuff. But uh, yeah, no, I recommend jumping in, and it's like a soap opera. People get amnesia, and sure. they're dead, but they're not dead, and it's that shit's fun if you like if, if you can work with the camp, if right. you can work with the cheese. No fucks given, and they do. And Vin Diesel's always taking himself way too seriously. <laughs> and so it's just fun to just talk shit about him. But yeah. man, it's it's interesting. I'm finally kind of understanding why people love those dumbass movies so much. But yeah. Yeah. So we got some I'll good to check out. I think that's the thing, though. Like, I feel like after watching the first one, I remember the, a big thing that kind of helped with it was Need for Speed Underground with its drag racing scenes. Mm, because, yeah. yeah, that came out at the same time. They're like, yeah, capitalize on the drag racing. So everyone's focusing on shifting gears, which. Now as an adult man with a stick shift, could give two shits about. <laughs> yeah, it's too real. <laughs> Do I just want to pay my my bills at the same time? My car insurance? No. I mean, it definitely matters, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, and in that movie, everyone's drifting for no reason all the time. But I thought yeah. that was on Tokyo Drift when that. Happened. No, well, the newer ones now they're just always drifting. The cars are just always sideways, apparently, as they go down the street and is jumping that, cliffs. It's nuts. Is that one game going to come out where you use your right stick to control the ass of your car and drift constantly? Oh, yeah. That looks so fucking cool. What was that? I don't know. Oh, I, I know we watched a video of it, but yeah. Drift right. was in the title. I can't remember anything. Uh, else. Gotcha. We got to Google that at some point. Yeah. But uh, Gavin, so do we start off with these? Initial Drift. Initial That's what Drift. Because it uh, it's, a, it's a spoof of the anime Initial D. Okay. Which is all about <laughs> drifting. Gotcha. Nice. Okay. So there was a positive Metacritic score. This one is going down. I thought it was going to be way more negative than yeah. honestly it came out with. We got Marvel's Avengers Metacritic. Currently it's at a 70. Uh, so we have some blurbs here. Game Informer gives it an 88. Avengers is in great shape right now, dazzling with it, with its story and action. Destructoid gives it a 60. At launch, it's not going to wow everyone. Maybe Marvel wanted this out as soon as possible, but it could have used another delay. IGN as their uh, review in progress. The single player story is enjoyable enough that I can at least recommend it on its own merits. But every time I jump into the cookie cutter multiplayer mission, it feels like a pointless grind. And I'm not convinced it will keep me enthusiastically playing for the past for past the credits. We got GameSpot. My overall impression after 25 hours is that Marvel's Avengers is a fun but flawed game with a lot of good ideas. It still feels as though the story campaign and the live game missions are pretty divorced from one another. Do you, where do you land on this? Do you, is this on your radar at all? It's weird because it seemed like it was going to be a live service game, but now it seems like people are saying if you just play it as a single player only game, it's fun. So mm. what the? F how do you take that? I wonder if that's what they because this is a Crystal Dynamics doing the Tomb Raider games. I wonder if that was their initial pitch or focused, and then whatever publishers publisher said, yeah, that's cool. We want to make as much money as possible, and that's what that's exactly what I would have done right there is falling down that hole. Yep, it looks like yeah, there's an angle to it. Yeah, she uh, kind of has like the Spider-Man ability with her stretchiness. Uh, uh, I've heard that she's like one of the best characters in the game. Sure. Is it Kamala Khan? I want to say something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, oh, so the, she, there you go. There you go. She's like a saving grace, I guess, character wise for the game. But um, yeah, I feel like they, I, when I initially heard that this was coming out, I wanted more of a single player experience. That's what I loved about Spider-Man on PS4. The whole multiplayer thing turns me off. Like the Bungie-esque nature to it turns me off. Isn't that what was advertised though? That you're going to be like having all these, the three heroes in a fight and you're going to be swapping back between them and doing all this stuff. I'm, I'm at least glad that graphically it is exactly what they promised. Yeah. This is a looker. It actually looks pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. And I've heard some people kind of talk shit about the visuals, but I mean, it, I think it looks spot on at that hotel. The one time I've watched TV in a long time, mm -hmm. they're playing commercials. They play commercials for Marvel Avengers and the CGI uh, trailer mm -hmm. for that, for that uh, commercial spot looked just like the gameplay. It was nuts. I mean, that's that they achieve this awesome fidelity. But um, yeah, I think where they fall apart apparently is the multiplayer stuff. Yeah, that sucks. Um, it's impressive, though. I, I appreciate that it's so long that it, it takes a little bit to review. So we gotcha. still and maybe they just didn't give out the review codes early enough on. And that could be it. They didn't. They weren't confident in their product. But 
it's nice to know that it's long. If you're going to pay this a full price for this game that may only be good single player, you're getting a solid single player. It seems like it, yeah. So. And I don't know if I would jump in for the full retail, but I think if this thing is on sale, I do want to give the single player a crack. And uh, I know they're going to add DLC stuff. we got Spider-Man on PS4 or a PlayStation coming yeah. in, uh, what, early 2021. And all the other characters are going to be able to buy or download for whatever, however they're going to do it. But um, how does multiplayer work? Because she's trying to be stealthy right now. If I'm like, you're playing her, and I'm the fucking Hulk climbing up the right. ladder behind you. <laughs> it must be everyone plays these single player specific missions, and then there's offshoots that let you jump in with friends. Yeah. But um, I wonder if you, when you play single player, if you have to have bots control the other characters in your party, or if you can, like you're saying, switch between them, because that would be awesome. Mm. If I could, you know, throw someone as Hulk over to Thor, take over him, and, you know, him with the hammer and. And Iron Man blasts them, and I can just kind of be switching uh, to these characters. As weird as it sounds, like seeing the reviews for this and gameplay for this is making me want to play more of that Switch exclusive um, Marvel game, it's Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, um, which is way more arcadey than, and this is part pre, pretty arcadey as is. Sure, um, but yeah, I actually have that on Switch. I never really gave it a fair shake, but I think that's one where you got to get some Mountain Dew. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some some chips and uh, some Doritos specifically, and just like <laughs> have an all nighter with a bud. But uh, aside from that, that's yeah, the way down. I always played my uh, hack and slash dungeon crawlers. Yeah, you got to have as much fun for sure. Just like have Fast and Furious playing in the background, and you're yes. just uh, mind numb and just playing these games. No, swordfish, swordfish. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Well, that's too adult for me, Gavin. But. Um, so yeah, some actually fairly positive reviews. It was more positive than I would have thought because it was looking on paper like it was not going to be good. Uh, a lot of the similar ideas people have reviewing it are saying that they wish they had more time to bake in the oven. Mm-hmm. Um, but I imagine they just had to hit this point before next gen or whatever. But yeah. maybe if they had more time to work on whatever is going on with the multiplayer, it seems like the single player at least is solid. I don't see any issues or hear about any issues of like the game having performance stuff. Right. The biggest complaint I hear is that you have equipment that doesn't have doesn't visually affect your character. Mm. So if you want to visually affect your character, you got to pay for that. And that is kind of bullshit. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. This does have a whole layer of like cash grab all over it. There's the Spider-Man thing that's, you know, exclusive. There's also the like packets of gum you can buy or want to say it's like if you're a Verizon customer, you get this Iron Man skin that has like the are you there now guy, you know, with the phone. That's like all these different like corporation tie ins. And it's just, they're trying to pay the bills or whatever, but it's, it's pretty gross. But you want this stuff removed from that as much as possible. But I mean, if we're, if we're going to get these, you know, Marvel characters that we can advertise based on, can we bring in Santa Claus? Cause he's Marvel. Uh, what do you mean by that? He, he's, uh, <laughs> I, I think he's one of the, there's like the highest level of mutant. It's called like an ultra, like a something level mutant. He's one of the highest level mutants because he can freeze time throughout the entire world. Okay. Deliver all the presents. <laughs> so he uses his power to uh, and then pop the fuck that. back. Yeah, no, he's a <laughs> Omega level, I believe, is what? the level of me. There's only there's, I mean, there's a decent amount, but they're pretty rare. So like Storm, uh, Gambit, if he unleashes his full power, uh-huh. uh, Santa Claus, um, Santa Claus in the mix. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I imagine there's a, some weird comic where they introduce him as canon. So yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Maybe he's yep, the first. That's true. That's he's the first the DLC character coming up soon. Santa Imagine Claus. the uproar if, like, we heard you loud and clear. The next uh, Marvel's Avengers DLC character is Santa Claus. I can't imagine just the internet melt from that. But and, uh, be dope. Gavin, that is it for us this week. That that feels about right. That was yeah. after after Good two hour. weeks of absolute bombardment. Mm-hmm. And we had Gamescom come up last week, and some of this stuff in the mix and i'm already forgetting what happened in my life and in video games we had dc exclusives uh yeah yeah thank you majig mm-hmm. get a breathe yeah i think uh as we get closer to holiday season we're gonna get more and more announcements so that's gonna be a lot coming up so it is exciting to be on the edge of next gen too like it doesn't come around very often of course this year yeah. or this uh generation is so weird with covid so it's like is there, there was always a rush to get stuff out before Black Friday, but is there even a Black Friday anymore? Like, how do we do the whole holiday shopping? So this has also changed the whole release of, you know, consoles in general, but it's weird. But normally we're all doped and excited for this and E3 is around and that's where they launch stuff. So it's very strange. 
It is weird. Yeah, it's it, it it's so strange to have an, a console launch without an E3, without a proper Gamescom. I think Gamescom did it better than. Uh, I mean, really, this whole summer of games things benefited so much. Yeah, there's always stuff being announced. Yeah, it's been really cool. So, I agree. Strange, but uh, yeah, this is this is the world now. <laughs> strange is the norm. I hope, hopefully, we hope you know we hope this is the last year of it. You know, there's rumor of it. You know, being another year. I think I think I it, can do it for another year. I think I, I think I can do it for one more year. If you I get, can't. if you tell me to, I fuck uh, <laughs> about the writing as well. It's like I cannot handle another year it's just gonna suck so bad but you're gonna grab your gonna grab your gun and post up at the <laughs> yeah. uh the governor's office <laughs> i'm gonna do it i'm gonna go full-blown trump mode i'm gonna <laughs> something's gonna happen i already got one up there sink your boat in the, uh... <laughs> yeah. buy a boat sink it well, gavin wind it there where can they find you online uh you can find me on twitter at uh drunk devs yep that's i don't post awesome well <laughs> You can find us on as well on the internet on Twitter at Plastic Heart Pod. That is it for us this week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.